We got a huge show today, lots of news to talk about, and then we dig into the matchups, the starts of the week. Jason continues the Boom Boom Kicker saga. And here's a button right here. You click this button, you subscribe to the show, you get alerted when we go live on Sunday with those last-minute start sit questions and every episode we release. So click that button right, right there and stay with us all year. Welcome to the Fantasy Footballers Podcast with your hosts, Andy Holloway, Jason Moore, and Mike Wright. Ah, welcome in. It's football time. Yes. 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 Welcome into the show. It is football time. Thursday, September 14th. Jason Moore, Mike Wright, Andy Holloway. This week has gone by fast, gentlemen. I, I agree. Like, I can't believe it's football time. I cannot believe that there's football tonight. We just finished football. It's just a two-day gap. Is that right? That's the truth. Yeah, I guess uh, There's in, only in a two way. days yeah. where you're not playing a game Yeah, in I'm, between. The, the NFL players don't care for it. I care for it very much. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm, I'm sorry. But enter- entertain me, please. <laughs> I mean, it, with it, your bodies, it is entertainment on the line. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it is. It's the sport that we love. Lots to talk about. Matchup previews, starts of the week. We've got NFL news to talk about. The boom boom kicker, and I guess an announcement this morning. Ooh, a really important one. Jason no longer yes. has <laughs> no longer has Zach Moss on his team. I have atoned. For my sins of picking up Zach Moss on waivers for 15 fab, I felt disgusting. I regretted it from the moment it happened. And so I woke up this morning and I went to our league chat and I said, someone take him from me, please. And I got a couple of offers for $1 of fab. Got an offer for $4 of fab. Nice. And then Mr. Andrew Holloway, we made a pick swap in my favor, late round, late round pick swap. And four dollars of fab. Yeah, and that was enough. Get off my team, Zach Moss. Get off. Get on. Get get, get on Andy's team. You could go start. You could be great. You can be great. Oh, that'll I'm be not, the next oh, step in this journey. I'm not. I'm not yeah. saying that he can't have a great game this week. I'm saying he cannot have a great game on my team. That would. I if I won, thanks to Zach Moss. Is that really a victory? Or is that a loss? All I right. think you, my personal brain. You're too far gone, I yeah. think, for no. sure. So um, I'm happy uh, that that has been rectified. Well, we'll talk about Zach Moss and the matchup today. Uh, we do have an announcement here at the top of the show. Can I get some trumpets or something? <laughs> Thank you. Uh, we have a signed CMC jersey, Christian McCaffrey, and we're going to give it away. You can go to footclangiveaway.com, completely free to enter. Uh, we like doing these giveaways. Brooksy tracked down a signed Christian McCaffrey jersey. Uh, yeah. So you will receive that, and it will come with at least 30 fantasy points for that week, probably. I don't know if we package that along with the jersey. But footclangiveaway.com, head over there, enter. It is free to enter. Uh, let's go ahead and hit a quick question today. Says uh, Leanna wrote in, says, Hi, I just joined a work league. I heard some trade talk between coworkers, including money. Mm. For example, I'll give you this player for that player and a hundred dollars. I call just, major BS. Am I overreacting? If not, how would you handle this situation? Now we are hundred percent sure we're not talking fab. Cause some yeah. sense, like you guys traded some fab. I'm just, just making sure. I, I assume that, uh, Leanna here is writing in talking about real quiche, real money, and saying, "Hey, I'll give you the now." now Jason the- offered me one hundred to take Jack Moss from his team, <laughs> but out of my integrity, I couldn't accept. Yeah, so this is interesting. Assuming that this is actual real money and not a joke, not just I overheard. Hey, I'll give you this player for that right. player, and I'll give you a hundred bucks. Like I would make that joke. But if this was real, if this was like, "Hey, I I will make this trade, and I will to to sweeten the deal, I will give you a hundred dollars <laughs> if you agree to this trade." Oh no. 
That I mean, is either wrong or an awesome league type that has previously already agreed to allow bribes? financial co compensation that goes into some kind of like m pot for the winner at the end or, or something like that. I think there's something here. I think there's something fun that sure. you could make around being able also, to bribe your way through trades. What are the stakes of this league? Like More than $100, <laughs> I hope. Not I mean, necessarily. Like if I could... If I could right. sweeten a great trade for me in League of Record and throw in $100, you know I would do it. Yes, we, we don't win a dollar. But, but we are unhinged people, Jason. <laughs> right, that's fair. <laughs> We're not in the office league. Like yeah, this, this. I mean, there, there are leagues where transactions have a cost that goes to the pot. Right. And that pot is, you know, it grows during the course of the year and the winner of the league receives more money than previous buy-ins and those can be fun mm -hmm. uh if, if it's established beforehand if it's not then this is what we call collusion yeah collusion bribery illegal uh yeah that's not good no you're not overreacting here when you when you ask is this okay no that is not okay in in 99.9 percent .9 of leagues you cannot sweeten a trade with things outside of the world of fantasy football or without that league. You can't be like, I will do, I will, well, hmm. Now let me think about this. <laughs> let me just say, let's say it's not financial because I just had an, I just had an example that crossed my mind. Okay. I was like, you can't do this. But then I was like, mm, like, a, like a house are you cleaning? Sure? Exactly. I was thinking of car cleaning. Uh, like, yeah, if, a, little, if it was a nice detail. But like, is that wrong? If, yes. It, it, <laughs> it's but wrong. not to make a bad trade, a trade that you're close on, right? Let's say you and I were close on that trade for Zach Moss this morning, and you're like, we're going back and forth. We counted a couple times, and I say, hey, you accept this trade right now. I will clean your car. I will go clean your car right now if you accept this trade. Is that really bad? But you have to clean it. You cannot hire a cleaning no, no, service. No, no, uh, I would agree. I would agree. This is a service. I yes. Will, I will do that. But is that wrong? If you like, Yes. Yeah, it is? It is, is that, but it's it's pretty yeah, awesome. I see, <laughs> <laughs> right? I see Andy's face. He's struggling here. I think there's nuance. I, I, the nuance that I'm hearing is, is 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 the comedy of like the trade's done, but I'm just gonna like, I'm just gonna do this for the fun of it, yeah, to make it entertaining like our fab Zach Moss I trade. Think it's I not saw, it's not a, an appropriate way to make a trade. I think I saw Brooks's face was very anti. Yeah, of course, the extra he has, yeah, he has morals and stuff. <laughs> yeah, okay, That's okay, well said. All right, well, well, how would you best? And I know you're a wordsmith uh, with this stuff. <laughs> But how would you best describe why that's not okay? Man, you you said it just the morals of it just the, it just feels dirty. It just uh, So so I uh, thought you were getting an oh no. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, part of it is that like not everybody could potentially make offers that are equal to other people's offers. Just, right. You know, if you're talking like just, money no. and financially I'll yeah. throw in $100, not everyone could Let's do that. Let's not equivocate here. But this everyone, is completely everyone wrong. could clean someone's car, right? Yeah. yeah, you can. Unless you're out of state, you okay. can't offer a car cleaning. All right. okay. Let me just put it this way. Foot Clan, don't do cool things like that. Wink. It needs to be in the Constitution. Yeah. News and notes from around the league. Presented by USAA Insurance. Well, Kenneth Gainwell is out. Ruled out for the Thursday Sheesh. night football game. We talked about the game yesterday, mostly with the presumption that he wouldn't play. So you're going to have a DeAndre Swift, likely active Rashad Penny, Boston Scott ensemble against Minnesota tonight. Yeah, which the the Minnesota Vikings uh, you know, quote unquote shut down the Tampa Bay running game. I don't know how much of that was the Minnesota Vikings and just the ineptitude of the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. But uh, I'm very excited. I ran out of breath there yes, at the end. Yes, <laughs> we, we both started laughing. <laughs> we both started laughing. It was like you you forgot how much breath you needed to talk. Oh, I, man. I, I, needed to, to, I needed to get through the thought. You didn't it was, seem like it, you were in some huge, like, uh, <laughs> like it wasn't a big speech, Mike. It was a normal sentence. Yeah. So, How'd you run out of air? Sometimes you're thinking too far ahead. <laughs> 
And you're like, stop talking. Buccaneers is a large word. He didn't realize how many syllables yes. it was going to take to get that out. But I'm very excited for uh, everyone to start DeAndre Swift as probability says you should, only to see Rashad Penny go off for 125 and two tonight. Oh, get ready for Boston Scott show, Jason. I I, I said it yesterday uh, when we were talking through the waivers. But I'm not starting a single eagle running back here. I uh, that's not to say that no eagle running back is going to get a touchdown, but I could see it being just as likely to be Kenneth Gainwell, to be Rashad Penny, to be DeAndre Swift. If you have to start one, Swift. <laughs> I is, don't think Gainwell is going to do much. Well, uh, uh, sorry, Boss Scott is what I meant. Um, if, if you have to start one, Swift because he projects as the pass catcher because he's been ahead on the depth chart. He has played ahead of Rashad Penny. He's the guy that you're going to throw in there. But I. I think you're going to have a three-headed timeshare, and it's going to be gross for the running backs. And I, I personally think there are probably better options, especially with how wide the waivers were this week. I'm going to run through some quick updates on injuries for everybody out there. Raheem Mostert, it was a vet rest and maintenance day because he missed practice on Wednesday. Nothing to worry about. Austin Eckler is listed. At, I didn't see this. It's listed as ankle slash personal. His oh. ankle means a lot to him. Um, this is a very uh, close ankle to him. <laughs> okay. He, yeah. had, he had a personal issue, but I don't know if you guys saw it because uh, uh, Eckler does a show with our boy Matt Harmon on Yahoo and saw a clip of Austin Eckler basically saying Joshua Kelly should be picked up in 100% of leagues. Now, I know he's he's caping for his boy. For sure. But eh, I don't know. Maybe, he was I, caping last year for him, too. Yeah, but this we all watched a very different Joshua Kelly in Week One. They also signed Jarrett Patterson to the to the to practice, practice squad. squad yeah. So uh, Eckler is scary. Of of the this is a Wednesday practice report day where you're going to have a ton of names that don't practice at all, and most all of them are not scary at all. They're veteran days of rest. And even though Austin Eckler is a veteran who could get a Wednesday off, we saw it at the end of that game. I believe this injury is legit, and I worry about his availability this week. All right, we have uh, Devontae Adams. Vet day rest of rest. Day. Jacoby Myers still in the concussion protocol. Christian Watson and Aaron Jones didn't practice due to their hamstrings. Which the Christian Watson, the, the report was he was getting work on the side. I believe Aaron Jones was not seen at practice, and not being seen on Wednesday for a hamstring is generally – Pretty bad news for availability. Yeah, we we uh, looked at this a while ago, but on a Wednesday, if you miss a Wednesday for a hamstring issue, it's like 53% of the time you miss that week. We had uh, Brandon Cook's news this morning. Dealing with this a stinks. sprained MCL, Mike McCarthy says he, quote, has a chance to play in week two. It's a Jets matchup. He should not be played, even if he was active, in my opinion. Yes. Correct. The, yeah. DeAndre Hopkins ankle injury. We'll talk about that game today. I believe he was moved into questionable status. Zach Moss, my champion, uh, listed as a full participant in Wednesday's practice. He's going to be their their starting running back, and probably Ev for the season. Evan Hall went on IR. Deion Jackson is in the doghouse. Deion Jackson, I believe, I looked at it this morning. And correct me if I'm wrong, Kyle. I believe he, he ran the ball 12 times for 13 yards. He had a crap ton of opportunity. Uh, I th Is that the right so it numbers? Would, no, no, you are in. I'm, I'm, I'm sorry. Am I way off? I got to update you. Okay, I'm sorry. It was 13 carries for 14 yards. Okay, one extra carry for one extra yard. But and it, he held, he protected the ball, though. Very, very poorly with two fumbles. But here's the thing for Deion Jackson. Thir that, that, 13 attempts, real quick. six targets. I mean, that means that still the majority of his carries he didn't fumble on, though. Yeah, that's true. Okay, so that's like glass, glass half full. full. <laughs> Zach Moss will be their, their guy, and he practiced in full, which is nice to see. Also, the injury that he suffered was not the kind that just recurs. Right. It's not a hamstring yep. or groin strain or something. It was a broken arm. I will say this. The last time that we saw Zach Moss in a starting role for the Indianapolis Colts against the Houston Texans. Mm -hmm. He was the running back two on the week, had 18 carries, 114 yards, a touchdown, three receptions. Uh, what a great pickup, Andy. I thought I could take advantage of your hatred. Yeah, and you did. You did. Because 
this was this is a move made out of the heart. And sometimes you just don't the want darkness there. Sometimes in. you don't want to win with certain players. That's right. <laughs> All right. Jerry Judy, close to playing last Sunday. So he could be back this week. Okay. James Conner limited with a calf injury. James Conner will not practice in full on Wednesday. Ever. The entirety of the season. Mark Andrews still limited oh, with the quad man. injury. You're going to have to take that down to the wire, Mike. I saw you. You let go of Isaiah Likely in our league of record. And I I'm, had to because I was over. Uh, oh, my my eye. My roster was illegal on sleeper because Mark Andrews was on my IR and now he was back to questionable. So I couldn't make a waiver claim. So I, I wasn't sure if that was because no, 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 that was you not would rather play a different player. The, it was uh, I have to be able to make some moves. And it was looking at the waiver wire. There's guys who after week one's catastrophe, I'm just as confident playing them as likely. Travis. Kelsey returned to a limited practice. I saw some video of this. Uh, he was landing on the injured knee. It seems very likely. Mm -hmm. I'm going to put it 80% that he's out there uh, with a brace probably. I think that's fair, especially after losing week one. I would expect the Chiefs to want to come out and go guns blazing in week two. He, he did look fine running around. He'll probably wear a brace and dominate. Darren Waller's hamstring situation. Welcome to the tight end injury portion of the show. Uh, we talked to Matthew Betts. He's our injury expert, DFS show, Injury Blitz podcast over at jointhefoot.com along with the Dynasty show. And I, is this a full panic situation for you, Mike? Is this no. A, this is a kind of uh, yellow alert. I mean, Darren Waller's sure. hamstring, it's the same hamstring that he was dealing with last year. Some details came out, uh, you know, Matthew Betts said he doesn't think it's going away anytime soon. It increases the volatility potential for Darren Waller week to week. And part of the program for him is going to be missing practice on Wednesdays every week. Yes. It, the uh, yellow alert, I think, is a good way to phrase it. Of There is, because of how the injury is, there's a chance that he can go through the whole season. They give him maintenance days, and nothing is ever wrong with Darren Waller's like he doesn't injure it to the point of he has to miss time, but it's not great that you have a the what looks like a chronic issue that'll last the whole season, and you're at any moment worried that he could pull or, or reaggravate the hamstring. So in that aspect, Darren Waller has gone to a pretty risky fantasy player for your roster, but he's still I think that I especially this week against the Arizona Cardinals, I'm expecting a really big bounce back for Darren Waller so it's it it's how much risk do you want to take on with him maybe you I maybe you wait it, for week two and then you trade him or you look at week two and you go yes Darren Waller's here yeah I mean your alternate at tight end is garbage so right. I would always take that chance until you don't have him out there that was today's news notes presented by USAA insurance learn more at usaa.com slash insurance into the forecast we go. Fantasy forecast. Well, we talked about it a little bit on Monday, the reaction to the weekend, but week one was down scoring-wise for the NFL. 12 of the 16 games hit the under in terms of their game Gross. total. There were just 61 total offensive TDs. Yucky. I believe that is uh, that's one of the lower totals we've seen in a while, and this is the part you won't like. There are eight games in week two with a total of forty and a half or lower. Eight games. I do not like it. I doubt that twelve of the sixteen hit the under this week when, when yeah. the unders are this low. The Green Bay Packers. We'll kick it off with this matchup. They're one and zero. They're taking on the one and zero Atlanta Falcons in Atlanta. It's a close line here. The DraftKings Sportsbook has it at Green Bay minus one, the over-under, 40 and a half. Yeah, so I, uh, before we get into the details here, I was really curious your take, Andy. Uh, if, if you're new here to the fantasy footballers, Andy's had a really good track record of um, viewing game outcomes with his stupid uh, almost upsets <laughs> of the week that are always nonsense and always work out or like 80% of the time. And this game, I was looking at it, and I, I really – I kept going back and forth. Who do you think wins this game? Green Bay. Interesting. 
Let me change my pick. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, it's, it's one of those things, like I said it uh, a couple of weeks ago. I think Atlanta I think Atlanta's a good team. You said it earlier this week as well. You agree. Like, they could win this division. I don't think they will have enough in this game on the offensive side. We'll find out. You know, Green Bay took on a hapless, is that the word? You know, a, a less than what people hoped for, Chicago defense. And then Atlanta took on a rookie quarterback. And uh, their free agent pickup, uh, why is the name escaping right now? Um, I'd help you, but I'm looking at them. Other yeah, stuff. one of Atlanta's defensive free agent pickups. Kyle should Jesse be, Bates. Jesse Bates. Yeah, highest ranked uh, in week one, according to PFF. But I don't think Atlanta wins this game at home. It's it's a close line. Were you surprised at the line, Jason? The Green Bay minus one. Um, no, no, I wasn't surprised at the line. I mean, this is, you know, essentially a pick 'em game in a game that is hard to pick 'em. So it makes sense. It's a pick 'em game that may not have the Packers top two weapons that would yeah that that may move the line and it may move my attitude towards the falcons winning it if aaron jones is out if christian watson is out and you've got aj Dillon and his 13 for 19 deon jackson impression last week and romeo dubs and um you know i like luke musgrave taking advantage of those opportunities mm -hmm. i think we're talking about him later and i liked what i saw from jordan love i mean he was really effective last week this is going to be a really important game for Jordan Love. Your eyes should be on him. I know that you 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 might be missing Christian Watson and Aaron Jones, but Jordan Love looked great last week, and the question has to be asked, was it Jordan Love or was it the Chicago sure. Bears? And the Atlanta Falcons are a perfect matchup. They're, they are, to me, a middle-of-the-pack defense that is not – you should be able to you should be able to do well against them if you're good, and if you suck against them, then that is telling. On the Atlanta side, I am curious what you are doing with pass catchers. Bijan and Tyler Algier, I would play them both this week. I don't think you guys are going to disagree with me on that. Nope. nope. However, I'm not playing another player. I'm not either. You're I, not? Like I'm, I'm still on the side of I want to see more from what happens with this offense with Drake London because we do have – look, it's not apples to apples, of course, because Bijan Robinson's on the team now. But the end of last year when Desmond Ritter was playing, Drake London – had some really good games at the end of the season. So uh, we have to find what is the actual true middle ground for Drake London. Is it those good games? Yeah, it, last week like, is not the truth of D Drake London right. at it's, all. It's not. He's he's going to get one target a week. No. That's not going to happen. But I'm not – I don't have the confidence to just throw throw him back out there of like, does that just become three or four targets? Or, or do we get back where we were – trending at the end of last season but until i know more i'm gonna put him on the bench if i can i i agree um with everything being said however the reality of the tight end position is such that i could still see playing kyle pitts recognizing that the passing volume is bad but you know it's it's a matter of your other options i would play kyle pitts over dalton kincaid um i would play kyle pitts over tyler higby and and what so about jake ferguson that is the most interesting name i have them back to back oh, I, I i'm on the kincaid side by the way I think Kincaid. That, yeah, has, I think, I think Kincaid has a good week, I would, but I, I understand that one. I would play. I'd play Kincaid over Pitts too, and I think Ferguson is a tough one because you do, you just don't have enough Ferguson against evidence. the Jets. I would still go Pitts, but the, I th sure. I think Musgrave Musgrave to me in this same game is the most interesting name. Yeah, um, I, I would play him. You would play Musgrave over Pitts. Pitts? I yeah. think I would as well. I'd play Laporta over Pitts in the, this week for Detroit too. Kyle Pitts ran twenty routes last week. And so maybe, yeah, maybe but he had all the air yards. I, he always does. Caught a thirty-four <laughs> yard reception. It was great. It was great. Yeah, I mean, Kyle Pitts can can have a breakout game. I liked what I saw from the deep routes of Luke Musgrave. I liked Laporta last week. I liked Kincaid last week. I mean, I think that all three of those guys are viable. Uh, Drake London, just to put it to the test, Mike, you brought up Elijah Moore yesterday in the Hungry for More segment. Are you playing him this week over Drake London? Yes. What about Nico Collins' 11 targets against Indianapolis? Uh, I'd play Nico. Okay. And what about Puka Nakua? Uh, I mean. Against San Francisco. Uh, the, the hardest part for Puka this week is most leagues he wasn't drafted. Now, uh, yes, hat, hat tip to Jason. Yeah. Jason, Jason did draft him. Like He uh, had all of his picks late. <laughs> <laughs> and so he was kind of backed into, well, I got to take some upside here. And 
and credit to him, he took Puka. But most people paid a huge amount of fab to go get Puka. And it's the question of how do you spend 20, 30% of your fab and not play that guy because the matchup is so bad. Well, and to not play him over a player that goosed you. Right. I so think you're probably playing Puka. As, as concerned as I am for what could happen to Puka this week, I'm playing him over Drake London. Uh, is Jordan Love in play? As a, like a QB2, sure. Purdy or Love? Purdy. Purdy. All right, back in just a minute. The Las Vegas Raiders going to Buffalo, take on the 0-1 Buffalo Bills. DraftKings Sportsbook has Buffalo as 8.5-point favorites. The over-under is 46.5. I think they're going to win by 17 points. <laughs> uh, okay. I, I, w I think Buffalo is going to, you know, they've, they've got wounds. They're beaten. They're battered. they got scrapes and bruises. There is no salve like Los Angeles and the Raiders on the road, in my opinion. Vegas. In, in my opinion. What did I say? Los, Los Angeles. Angeles. Um, no, Las Close Vegas enough. traveling to Buffalo. If Buffalo looks bad this week, sound the alarms. Sure. Mm -hmm. Because mm -hmm. everyone wanted to talk about their demise. They, they will have been right if they lose to Las Vegas at home in this game, and I just don't think that's going to happen. Uh, but here we go. The Raiders are 1-0. Are and oh. The Bills are 0-1. Oh Jimmy Garoppolo, uh, I believe he was a little banged up too, or did he just miss practice with a maintenance day? I think it was maintenance, but he definitely went spa to day. a questionable spa, spa day. Spa day. Oh, you yeah, got to keep that. Uh, had to get the, get the that face skin. peel. Yeah. Man, you got to keep that skin looking good. Is this a get right game for Josh Allen? I think so. It should be absolutely. He's my number one ranked quarterback on the week. I don't know if he's there for you guys. I think he's my number two, but I mean, you you know, he's not a question. Uh, so Jimmy was limited with an ankle injury. Uh, James Cook, what would you think of what you saw in week one? It was. Just missed a touchdown up the sideline. Great defensive did, play. But it was almost exactly like what everybody, basically everybody was right. Like <laughs> if you were in on James Cook, the talent, and you're like I don't, I don't see a way that he's not the workhorse on this team, you were 100% right because he had 80% of the running back attempts. He had a 15% target share. And also if, played the Jets in week one. He also played the Jets. But if your argument was, it doesn't matter if you're the workhorse for the Buffalo Bills because you still don't produce for fantasy football. And that was also true because with everything that he had, he was still the running back 29. But better days are coming for James Cook. 12 carries, six targets. That's That's juicy stuff. Six targets is awesome. The fact that it turned into 17 yards, that's the Jets. And so I, I, I love the utilization um, and the fact that they're playing against the Raiders. Uh, James, Cook's, James Cook, to me, is absolutely in every lineup. That If I've got him on my yeah, roster, yeah. he's starting. Don't love the fact that the – I think we brought it up that at the end of the game in the, the two-minute drill. Two drill, it was Latavius Murray. I think that could. I think it's possible that that could be a Jets thing as well, just for the the it pass, pass blocking okay. um, against a great uh, you know uh, pass rush and – you know, you got Max Crosby here for the Raiders, but I you, I don't think most people look at the Raiders as this excellent pass rush. Okay, uh, let's talk about Josh Jacobs. He saw everything. I mean, I think Zamir White yeah. had three touches in the game. You play Jacobs. Yes, you do. And uh, by the way, the Jimmy G uh, was an ankle. Yes. So he, he should be okay. Stephon Diggs was 10 for 102 and a touchdown. He's pretty good. Gabe the Babe. Uh, I am not. So I went. I'm not in on Gabe the Babe. I went to investigate making him my start of the week because you've got a lot of things in his favor here. Twenty-seven and a half point over on, or uh, implied team total for the Bills. You've got a beatable secondary here for the Raiders. And I went back and I I, I looked at all of his game logs. I, I looked at the home road splits. I looked at the uh, good defenses versus bad defenses. Um, w trying to figure out where he pops. And there's no rhyme or reason <laughs> oh, no, to it's anything a dirty pop. he does. It's a dirty pop. So here's what Gabe Davis is. He is a stick of dynamite that if you need, if you're going up against someone, you could put him in on any matchup, any week. Don't even care. Don't even care what it is. It, the, it, it's just a matter of he is injecting volatility into your lineup. He can go and have 102. He can also stink. That's what he's going to be week in and week out. So this isn't about 
the Raiders. This is about your personal fantasy football roster. Do you need a big upside play? Play Gabe Davis. Do you need safety? Don't play Gabe Davis. Dalton Kincaid, Dawson Knox, uh, they were similarly targeted in the first week. Uh, we'll talk about Dalton Kincaid later. Oh, baby. Uh, let's let's look at the other side. Devontae Adams had a rest day. Jacoby Myers, the concussion. It wasn't a great week for Devontae Adams, but he's Devontae Adams, so you're going to be playing him. Still mm -hmm. had nine targets, didn't score. Uh, Hunter Renfro could end up being the step-in for Jacoby Myers. Mm -hmm. I'm not really excited about that possibility mm -hmm. against Buffalo. Are we are we done talking about this uh, this matchup? Is there something uh, yeah. else you want to discuss? Just it, the question is, if Jacoby clears concussion protocol, which I would put that at a very, very low percentage, do you play him? Yeah, I, I, I would play him okay. in a PPR As, I, league, I would but I, I think that's 10%. I do think sure. with him out of the way, Devontae Adams it has a get-right game. One of the things that's, that was a little concerning to me is I didn't love the targets that went Josh Jacobs' way in the first matchup with Jimmy G. Uh, I'd like to see a little bit more because that was what gave him some superpowers last last year. He had three targets, two catches. So I'm watching that. I want to see what the tendencies are. The other thing is without Darren Waller in this offense, it's not a tight end centric offense like it was. You know, you had 76% of the targets go to wide receivers in Las Vegas. That wasn't normal. That was number three in the NFL this last week. Austin Hooper's just Austin Hooper. Michael Mayer didn't get a target. So uh, it is worth watching how the Jacobs targets break down and whether, you know, if they keep doing that with the wide receivers, then Jacoby Myers is going to be viable all year. Sure. Baltimore's 1-0. They take on the 0-1 Cincinnati Bengals. The DraftKings Sportsbook line has Cincinnati's 3.5-point home favorites. The over-under is 46.5. I've had – let me just be honest. I've had a hard time evaluating this game because historically speaking, these are very exciting games games and matchups and good for fantasy. But I also have my my preconceived notions of this Baltimore defense. We only got to see them against Houston, so we didn't see see them on display. The Bengals look so terrible. So it it's one of those things where it's like do you just imbue bounce back across the board for Cincinnati like Burrow, Chase, Higgins, Mixon, is this going to be good against this Baltimore defense or is this going to be a a, a dogfight in the AFC North? It's I, it, I don't know that it matters. Like, this is – I'm putting everybody back in. I'm not scared off of Joe Burrow unless it, it – do we have what, – what's the range? Slight chance of rain? Ooh. Uh -oh. <laughs> Ooh, uh -oh. Little tiny uh -oh. hands. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> so, but no, I, I'm, I'm still playing everybody. I'm still playing T. Higgins despite – look, T. Higgins just – this is what happens. He, he – he emotionally harms you occasionally throughout the season. Yeah, I mean, T. Higgins is, is, is should be in your lineup. We'll talk yes. about him in a little bit. There, there's no reason to really go away from him. You you do have a divisional matchup where sometimes, you know, we've seen over the last couple of years a 17-19, a 16-27, to 17-24, a to lower scoring games, but we also saw, you know, 41-21, to 41-17. to These two teams are both really good. And there's enough important players. I believe you. Everyone who has a bangle really wants Mark Andrews to be active for this yes. game. Uh, you, the what we saw from the Baltimore Ravens offense in Week One was probably the most disappointing thing I saw in Week One because they went up against the Texans, and even though they 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 covered their spread, which was the largest of the week, and won, they did not look good doing it. It was a full game long struggle to slowly score and they looked like they really were missing their number one target so hopefully Mark Andrews is back and if that offense can go then you're going to play pretty much all of your pieces you drafted in these games what about the running back situation oh. in Baltimore though where you have to make Philadelphia like decisions Gus Edwards Justice Hill how are those touches going to break down and and how does that factor in when you look at Todd Monken's new offense. Yeah, I think it'll be 60-40 uh, Justice Hill as far as the split okay. goes. Because wow. Touches? Be touches. Not snaps? Well, no, I guess no. I, I do think snaps. I think touches might be a little closer together, but the receptions will certainly be in the favor of 
um, of Justice Hill. And so that's where fantasy wise, I, I want to lean on that side. We also saw Justice Hill used at the goal line, which you would think, oh, we get down to the goal line yeah. and they're going to bring in the big bruising back the and Gus Edwards. There. But I think that the, you know, the Todd Monken offense is, is, is spread out. They'll throw it to the running back, um, get a receiving touchdown near the goal line as well. So I, I lean on the, the Justice Hill side. Not a great matchup against the Bengals. This isn't a smash like you have to start Justice Hill or Gus Edwards. I see them both as like flex options you could throw in. Obviously, we were super impressed with Zay Flowers in week one. But it would be kind of silly not to consider what Jason said about the absence of Mark Andrews in this sure. offense. So uh, our expectations still extremely high for Zay Flowers in, in this matchup? They are because it wasn't just like – it wasn't just good production. It was uh, he was their guy. I mean, he he was the go-to piece of the offense despite spending all of that money on Odell Beckham and having a first-round wide receiver in Rashad Bateman. It was the Zay Flowers show. We have a, a tweet from Football Insights uh, saying Zay Flowers 60% design target rate on 10 targets yesterday, and that would be like among all weeks since 2022. That's kind of like the highest – or, or tied with the highest of the just featuring one player. And it wasn't simply they're featuring him. It was, this kid is nasty. Like, he is going to do some really special things. And, of course, when Mark Andrews comes in, Zay Flowers' target share will go down. But I think that it's counterbalanced that the offense will just be better. You'll have more scoring opportunities for Zay. He He's already in there for me as a, a wide receiver, too, that I'm playing every week. The Seattle Seahawks in their 0-1 record, traveled to Detroit to take on the Lions, who had the big Thursday night win over the Chiefs. The DraftKings Sportsbook line here, Detroit minus 5.5 at home. It, it's it's delightful to say those lines, but it's unfamiliar. The over-under is 47.5. Uh, last week they played in week four, I believe, 93 combined points. Seattle's going to need to protect Geno Smith from Aiden Hutchinson, if that's going to happen I again. I don't know if they can. And I don't know if they can do it because they they might not have two of their offensive linemen. They signed 41-year-old Jason Peters, who's probably not available in this game. I do wonder if we're at, at risk of a bit of a blowout and then a running heavy second half for Detroit. Uh, you know, Jared Goff. Yes. You know, Mike is in on Jared Goff. He was the stream of the week. We'll talk about him later. I love both running backs in Detroit this week. Agreed. Armand Ra is going to be in your lineup. And I think you can take the shot on Sam Laporta since he's out there every single snap. But I, I, I start up all of my Detroit Lions without hesitation. Without any hesitation. Armand Ra St. Brown could be the number one wide receiver this week. He, he, li he lines up perfectly in this matchup, the way that they're going to utilize him. I mean, we saw, um, we saw Puka. Last week, just completely dominate the Seahawks, and Amon Ra is as good as it gets. So, yeah, I mean, there's there's no Detroit line. I'm not starting. I'm I'm not excited to play Sam Laporta. I would I would play Kyle Pitts over him just because there's there's a lot of different ways this game could go for the Lions. But it, it's a name you need to keep monitoring because he was so involved. Um, obviously, five targets in your first game of NFL action is really good for the tight end position. Now the Seahawks? Yeah, there's a oh, lot of man. there's a lot of worries on that side. Uh you have talented players. I mean, Metcalf got into the end zone. Kenneth Walker dominated all the snaps in week one. That was a storyline we were following, and Zach Charbonnet only had twenty four percent of snaps and three opportunities. Yeah, that that's the big takeaway from week one was despite the uh the groin injury that kept Walker out most of the preseason and some of this last week. As soon as the game started, you knew what was going on, and this is this is a situation where I I I am more hesitant to believe that. Well, Charbonnet will just keep getting more and more because he's good. We've seen it before with Pete Carroll when he's got his guy that he loves, and they talked about this on draft day. Like they they said they talked to Kenneth Walker before drafting Charbonnet. They had a conversation, and he was on board with the plan. And I think the plan is. He's your backup. I, the, 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 all the beat reporters I talked to in Seattle, I didn't want to believe it through the draft season, but they all told me, draft Kenneth Walker. It's Kenneth Walker's team. 
He's going to be the guy, and uh, you know, and we saw that week one at the very so least. So let, let's turn that into a fantasy conundrum then, because players every week we're going to have the waiver show. You're going to have players you want to go out and grab. Are you willing to let go of Zach Charbonnet? Yeah, I, if I, you're not the Kenneth Walker manager. Uh, so Zach Charbonnet needs to be seen to me as a as an insurance option, and he's one of the best. I think if Kenneth Walker goes down, I mean the 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 hullabaloo to get Zach Charbonnet would be incredible, but. He's not going to do something. I, I don't believe he's going to really do something to be a weekly starter, a flex option, the way that we hoped he would. Now, th we've only got one week, and he's a rookie, so maybe maybe I'm overreacting. But, I mean, we had DJ Dallas play 22% of snaps, Zach Charbonnet 24% of snaps, and we've just seen this before from Pete Carroll. So I am skeptical that Charbonnet will be a um, someone that you could play without an injury ahead of him. Yeah, and, and which I tend to agree with that, but of course, depending on how big your your bench is, like I'm trying to keep Charbonnet on my bench. I'm like over a wide receiver four-ish type of a player where there's just you're like, oh, I got I'm gonna hold on to this guy because maybe on a bye week I might need this. No, I'll I'll find that wide receiver when I need to find them, and just. The, the way that the NFL is going right now, I'm going to have Charbonnet on my bench if possible because of the upside that that becomes should Walker miss time. Yeah, I, I, I do agree, and I want to make sure it's not – I'm not saying get rid of Charbonnet. I, you know, get rid of Charbonnet if, if, if uh, Raheem Mostert was on your waivers and you can, you can get a starter uh, at that same position. What's the concern level for Tyler Lockett? He played 88% of snaps, but he was only 2 for 10. You had sure. Jackson Smith and Jigba, who played 59% of snaps, uh, did not have a relevant game, 3 for 13. The concern is the same. It, are what, you playing him this week? Are you going to wait and see? Uh, I'd be willing to put him back out there. The The concern for Lockett is just if you have concern for the Seattle offense, then that's that translates to Lockett. If you're if you have some confidence that they're, they're going to figure out the offensive line situation, then Lockett is is back into being great. All right, the uh, let's go to a must-win matchup. The Los Angeles Chargers at 0-1 take on the Tennessee Titans, who are 0-1. Titans are the home team in this one. DraftKings Sportsbook line has the Chargers as three-point road favorites. The over-under is 45-and-a-half. Uh, you don't want to start your season at 0-2 in the AFC. And Tennessee lost 15-16 to to New Orleans. The Chargers, they did what they do. They lost a close a close game that they competed in, lots of points on the board, but got KO'd by uh, Tyreek and Tua. What are we doing with this matchup? Because I, I have not seen a quarterback perform more consistently turd-like <laughs> than Ryan Tannehill was, played last week. I mean, it was, it was decisions. It was quality of throws, time to throw. It was it was everything. He looked in one week like a player that didn't deserve to play quarterback in this league, and yet they barely lost the football game. They did compete. It his performance, I think, really negatively affected the amount of work that Derrick Henry had the opportunity to get. DeAndre Hopkins' future with this team is going to be dependent on Tannehill's competence. The Tennessee's the home team here. They're underdogs. The Chargers gave up a ton of yards last week. They look discombobulated as a defense. What are we expecting from the powerhouse uh, Titans? Yeah, I mean, players. That is, we are expecting uh, a bounce back game for Derrick Henry. I think that this is a really nice matchup for him to okay. to be able to succeed and and run on the Chargers. The Chargers rush defense is is nothing special. Um, and so if, if he's able to run the ball, I mean, that's, that's the Titans only hope the Titans hope in this game is that Derrick Henry controls the clock, has a monstrous game, uh, keeps, uh, Justin Herbert off the field. Were you concerned with the utilization by Henry last week? That's he was, he was 48% of snaps in a game that was close. I, I read, you know, some stuff from the beat reporters in Tennessee and it's kind of like, it, the, the, his utilization was inexplicable. It was not. Ex, it was not something you expected to see. And I'm just curious: was it management of Derrick Henry's reps? 
I mean, like he's normally in a close game. It was very strange. I was trying to do a quick look here, and it looks like since 2019, I can only find two games before this year that he was sub 50% of snaps. So for it to be 34 pass attempts for Tannehill too. for it to be week one, a rookie running back, Tajay Spears, who's like, he's nice. He's a nice player, but he had more snaps than Derrick Henry. It's, it is a, he had four, it, it four is targets. a target. It is a big red flag of eyes on this matchup. What is the utilization of Derrick Henry? I'm I'm still playing him with confidence of like, no, I spent a second rounder on Derrick Henry. He's King Henry. I I think they'll figure it out. But if and against the Chargers, he should figure it out. But if you if we get another thing where he's like fifty to, you know, fifty to sixty percent of the snaps and Tajay Spears is, is getting all this work on the field, not necessarily touches, but just being on the field. That will be very, very troublesome. Would you rather have Charbonnet, who you talked about earlier, on your bench, or would you rather have ta uh, Tajay Spears stashed away? Ooh. Oh, that's a really good I question. I, I, I would rather have Charbonnet. I I think I go Spears because I mean, they – I mentioned it earlier, but they threw two wheel routes to Tajay Spears. Like He had a bunch of air yards. that They, they didn't connect because Ryan Tannehill had such a poor game, but – the fact that they're even willing to use a running back in that way. Like Spears is a guy that in a full desperate situation you could put into a lineup as a flex play, and then if Derrick Henry misses time, Tajay Spears is going to get a whole bunch of targets and a bunch of work. I want to talk about the Chargers offense because through one game, it was everything I saw last year. Mm -hmm. it, in exact, it was an exact replica of what we – it was not what we hoped. We saw a lot of behind-the-line-of-scrimmage targets – Justin Herbert only threw for one touchdown. Keenan Allen looked good, but Mike Williams didn't impress. Quentin Johnson didn't impress. And we, of course, scored on the ground, right? Austin Eckler and Joshua Kelly got into the end zone. And it was one of those games where you look at it and you say, this game is like two or three plays from Justin Herbert being the number one quarterback on the week. Mm -hmm. And they didn't happen, which was what uh, it happened a lot last year because Justin Herbert – Threw for, uh, was it 4,800 yards? He was Stupid a rushing touchdowns, man. I mean, he had, Just tap that yeah, four, pass. <laughs> Just tap that pass. Make it a pass. So, you know, he was he was good. I mean, 70% completion, 23 for 33 for 228 yards. He was very good, but this matchup is so much better. This matchup is so much better for Justin Herbert this week because the Titans now for... Is this the draft pick redemption game? Yeah, I, I, th I think so. You, you've got the Titans who last season were so bad against quarterbacks, against wide receivers, against tight ends, that you could throw on them like crazy, but you really couldn't run on them well. And then in one game that we saw uh, so far this season, we, we saw that again. You know, They gave up 40 points to the wide receiver position and six points to the running back position. So given Eckler's injury, I mean, if Eckler's out there, you're obviously going to play him and he's a pass catcher. But I do think that the receiving weapons here and the passing game for Justin Herbert are going to be on fire. Where are you at for... Let's say Eckler goes uh, lim limited practice Thursday and Friday. He suits up. Where are you with Joshua Kelly? Are you going to put him in there? I as would a not start Joshua Kelly. If, if Eckler is active against the Titans in a, in a game where I don't project a bunch of rushing touchdowns, I wouldn't start. What about Joshua Kelly or Zach Moss? <laughs> um, I would I – would, well, if Eckler is out there, then – Definitely Joshua Kelly, if it's my lineup. <laughs> okay. um, if it's your lineup, Zach Moss makes more sense, will mm. have more work, has a better matchup. Oh, man, I want him to have but a big But in my week, lineup, it's gonna it happen. won't happen. That was the scary – that was why I had to get rid of him because I thought, oh, no, if Eckler doesn't play, I have to play Zach Moss. And usually a fantasy manager would be like, well, I'm glad I have him. Not me. So big, big week for Mike Williams? I, I do. I, I think I want uh, I want the pieces here for the passing game. So big yeah. week for Mike Williams. Absolutely. Derek Carr and the wide receivers for the Saints just carved this secondary up. Chicago, the Chicago Bears at 0-1 take on the Tampa Bay Buccaneers who are 1-0. This is another one of those lower over-under games. The DraftKings Sportsbook line has Tampa Bay 2.5 point home favorites. The over-under is 40.5. The Bears have... Lost 11 in a row, and the Bucks could end up starting the season 2-0 and in the wide-open NFC South. Is anybody in this game an auto start? We saw really disappointing performances from Rashad White, 
Um, Justin Fields is an auto start. I think there's quite a few auto starts, actually. I don't know how you would sit Evans and Godwin. Those two players had plenty of targets. Uh, so they're in. Justin Fields is in. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Khalil Herbert is probably in. Yeah, I'm still – I'm uh, – I don't mind people being excited for the potential of Roshan Johnson, but at, like Khalil Herbert is still the starter for this team. I'm playing DJ Moore and, too. Oh me, man, really? Yeah, I'm playing DJ Moore this week. I'm really, really playing him. Yeah, I don't, he I don't mind that at all. He should like this is going to DJ be Moore should be squeaky wheel. Like he, he should have gone into the wide receiver meeting just, just flip a table, just tearing the coach is a new one of like you brought me here to be the one and you give me two targets. He went into the locker room and he started his eyes started wigging out and he saw the Bears logos start to transform to Panthers <laughs> logos on the wall and he's like, "Where am I? I've done this before." But no, I I'm playing okay. I think the Chicago has a bounce back game here. Um it, you know, the line is too close for me to go almost upset. I think Chicago wins the ball game. Ooh, okay. I think this is a bounce back adjustment game for Justin Fields. I think they let him run the ball more. I think DJ Moore is more highly targeted. I think they take more downfield chances. Uh, and I, I'm i cool with the Bears Seriously. in this game. Bears, fix it. Also, <clears throat> I know I've been anti-Rashad White because he's not very good at football, but this <laughs> is a this is a really you, nice matchup you, for you him. You still have to play Rashad White. When you're getting that level yes. of volume, Good things can happen. He's a good play this week, and they can um, definitely happen against the Bears. I, I, Correct. I certainly would. You know, if he was in my lineup, he's a flex-worthy start. What should the Bears do with Chase Claypool? They should cut him. Uh, uh, <laughs> I, and I mean that. I mean that completely. The if you haven't seen oh, the, the the video of his snaps <laughs> and the effort or lack thereof that he showed on the field. Like I know you traded a you traded basically a first round pick for him. Yes. The thirty second pick in this year's draft was traded last season uh for Chase Claypool. But what he did on the field was an insult to your offense, an insult to your organization. An insult to football. Yeah, I yeah. mean you, all wide receivers. They should one hundred percent cut him to send a message to the rest of the team that like it doesn't it does the, Chase Claypool is he playing. doesn't matter enough. To like, like he doesn't have clout to do that crap. No, the only reason he's playing is because they traded a two for him. Yeah. So I, uh, yeah, for sure. To me, I would cut him at the very least. Like, let's say you want to send a message. You're like, we don't have a ton of talent. We need to keep him. Then you, then you bench him for yeah, a week. He's a like healthy as the scratch. coach. Yeah, healthy scratch. I also believe Kate Otten played the most snaps of any tight end in football in week one. So just something to to monitor if if your bar is set at. On the field mm. for a tight end, I don't. He didn't. He didn't do much. No, but I was. I mean, wasn't Smythe out there for a hundo? Maybe percent. Maybe. Uh, maybe just it was played more snaps. <laughs> maybe. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, so, Kansas City, Jacksonville. This should be fun. Yeah. Kansas City, zero and one, going to Jacksonville, who's one and zero. The DraftKings Sportsbook line has Kansas City. As three and a half point favorites in this game, the over under is fifty one. Yeah, baby. Thank you. Here we go. Thank you. I've had a hard time. Like to me, obviously, you're playing Patrick Mahomes, Trevor Lawrence. You're playing Travis Etienne. You're playing Calvin Ridley, and you're playing Travis Kelsey if he's active. So th let's get the auto starts out of the way. Yeah. Okay. So that we can debate some more difficult situations. This is a this is a game where the Chiefs have a twenty seven point three implied point total. They're going to put points up on the board, mm -hmm. and yet you are, you're, you have a smattering of names. You have Pacheco, who, you know, he was out on the field a ton last week, had four receptions. You have Kadarius Tony and Rashi Rice and Sky Moore, who, look, last week, it was really hard. Like the whole wide receiver room was a discouragement, other than maybe Rice, who benefited from having the touchdown. But do you do you try to go back to the well? Do you try to find some value there this week? No. I mean, Kadarius Tony is practicing in full. They they've been defending him. You're not taking a shot on it. It's easy to defend him right now. He's not very fast. You're not taking a shot on any of those guys. No, no, not in the wide receiver core. Uh, I'm fine holding on to Kadarius Tony and Rushy Rice if you want. Um, I'm not starting. Kadarius Tony, I'm not starting Sky Moore. I'm not starting Rashi Rice, who I like, or MVS. I know there's a high over under. Maybe you want to throw one of these guys in a DFS lineup or two. Hope that you know MVS gets an 80 yard touchdown or something like that. But the 
there's no reliability here from the receivers. I think Travis Kelsey will be active in this game. So to me, it's Mahomes, Pacheco, and Kelsey. Is Pacheco and, an auto, like you want him in your lineup this week? I, I do want him in my lineup. The, yeah, the, I think so. The matchup is fine. The over-under is great. Um, and his utilization last week, you know, you, you, you had 16 Clyde, opportunities. 16 opportunities, but you had Clyde get that, like, honorary start. You know what I mean? He right. started the game and started the season as, like, the first drive was his. And it's like, and okay, now let's get the uh, the better guy in here. And I think that as the season goes in, you'll just have Pacheco more and more involved. Uh, the only questions on the other side, I mean, people have been asking a lot about dropping Christian Kirk for other oh, free agent man. options. He, he was only on the field 69% of the time. Like, nice. we have to understand – that the addition of Calvin Ridley, and what it really, what it represents for the future of this franchise, because we we went in with two question marks. We didn't know how good he still was, and then we didn't know the participation. But like, if I had just told you, for example, let's pretend that Jacksonville Jaguars added Jamar Chase this offseason. Mm -hmm. How you know you're not looking at one week and saying, "Oh, Christian Kirk's going to work himself back into the lineup." You're saying. Uh, there's a change of hierarchy, hierarchy completely right. at the wider. And I don't know if it's that far off of what they did. I, I think that it's a nice illustration to highlight like what the reality is for the Jacksonville Jaguars and for Christian Kirk and for Zay Jones. There is a new alpha in town. It is Calvin Ridley. He will dominate the target market share. But if you look at the Bengals, well, you're going to start T. Higgins because he's good and you don't just have one wide receiver um, dominate everything. In a matchup like this against the Chiefs, where you know the Chiefs are going to be scoring, this game is going to be going back and forth. They're going to be throwing a lot. I'm 100% fine taking a shot on Zay Jones or uh, Christian Kirk. Evan Ingram should be good. Like They're going to throw the ball just a ton in this game. I'm far more confident in Zay Jones. Christian Kirk would be just – that's a break glass for me. I don't want to drop him. Just Gabe Davis or Christian Kirk, Jason? Ooh. That's a That, to me, is – are Probably they... Gabe Davis. Okay. Because I think yeah. I think both have volatility. Kadarius Tony oh, or Christian, Christian Kirk. Christian Kirk. Okay. I've got I, I'm gonna say it. I'm gonna say it. Oh. It's first one of the year. Because I can't stop saying it. Oh. Oh no. Kadarius Tony scores this week. It's a touchdown it's a guarantee. It's a touchdown guarantee oh, Kadarius Tony gets mercy. into the end zone. Right. I'd play him over Christian Kirk. I know look at the stink of last week. I don't know if ten days gets rid of it because of the Thursday night game. I think Darius Tony gets into the end zone this week. In fact, I think he has a bounce back performance and has us talking about him next week. Do you week. have him on any fantasy rosters? Do you have him in the one. leagues you're playing? You have one. So I expect him to be in your lineup then. <laughs> I'm not Will you do it yourself? Will you put him in your lineup? Well, that, I did not make the contention you should put him in your lineup. You Jason. said you think he's got a good game and I think he scores touchdown. a touchdown. I think he scores a touchdown. Well, wouldn't you want that in your lineup? Not well, the, the team that I have him on also has Travis Kelsey. I'm not doubling up there. And it, right. it could be like, it, it could be a, a touchdown and five no, yards. No, I, it's not a it's not a stardom guarantee. I'm not doing. It. You yeah, can't you can't chicken me into it. I don't know it. what's going on here. I don't know what I'm <laughs> playing. Zach Moss over him. I love piling on. Somebody, yeah. if I can, but I don't know what's happening right all, now. All you, all you got to do, you I hear someone. He's doing. You, hear, you hear someone barking at bark, someone. Bark, yeah, on, get it on him, Mike. Bark, 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 bark. We've bark. already got Al Borland putting a uh, anytime touchdown scoring bet on Tony, who's only it's only plus two fifty. What? But yeah. it's a guarantee. Yeah, because the Vegas. <laughs> oh, what did I? Starts of the week. Guess we're moving on. We're done with that. All right, starts of the week this week. My quarterback's Justin Fields. I'm gonna go. Uh, give the, the encouragement to all of the people that drafted him. I, you don't throw the towel in after that first week. He threw a ton of passes. They weren't very far, but he did throw a bunch of them. They fixed it this week. He's going to run for 70, 80 yards. It's going to be good. Justin Fields. Yeah, I'm going to go with Trevor Lawrence from the game we just talked about. You saw in week one. The, the you know they the Jags passed all over the place. Ridley is great. Zay Jones is making plays. You've got ETN involved. I've got him ranked as my quarterback six this week and the highest over under. And last year they faced the Chiefs twice, played well against them in the playoffs deep into the game. And in week ten, two hundred and fifty nine and two, he was the quarterback eight on the week. And this time he's at home with a twenty four point uh, team implied total. So I'm in on T Law. For me, it is. <laughs> 
Jared Garf. Jared. Jared Garf. Lions have oh, the fourth, hell. fourth highest in t- uh, team applied total of the week. Jared Goff's at home. Jared Goff at home is delightful for fantasy football. We watched this Seattle defense who I thought they were going to be much better, than, but they got torn apart by Puka Nakua and Tutu at well. Oh, that's embarrassing. So, Puka Tutu. Uh, Amon Ross St. Brown is going to have himself a fine day. And Jared Goff, I uh, it, it put my money where my mouth is. League of record, I dropped Kirk Cousins to stream Jared Goff for this week. Jameer Gibbs is my running back start of the week. Welcome to the party, Jameer Gibbs. This I don't week, know. I heard I heard Coach Guns Mahoney <laughs> poking the bear, saying, "Stop asking for more touches." Did you for see Jameer his quote? He, yes. he said, uh, "He said, well, we were going to, but now we're not because you've asked so many <laughs> times." And then he said, "Just kidding. We are going to give him more. We love him. Look, this is the week you're gonna you're going to be very excited that you have Jameer Gibbs on your roster. Seattle, they they're not going to stop Jameer Gibbs. He's going to have more opportunities." They've given up the fourth most fantasy points to running backs last year, and uh, this is the beginning of the every week start of Jameer Gibbs. Yeah, it really is. I'm going to try to trade for Gibbs. I'm writing a little Making note. Making some notes, geese? In all my leagues. Got um, it. All right, I'm going to go Damian Pierce for my start of the week. Oh, I like that Whoa. because I have him, and yeah. I need this to be true. <laughs> well, he, one, he's super talented. Two, we knew that the matchup against Baltimore wasn't good. Three, we know that most matchups this year aren't going to be great because he plays for the – Texans, he's not going to be in a ton of games where you expect it to be a close game or that they have a chance to win. Oh, but this one is. He's got the Indianapolis Colts uh, coming to town. It is a one-point game, basically a pick em. And in nine games last year when he had 17-plus opportunities, he averaged 14.8 fantasy points per game. He's going to get the ball a lot in this game. It's going to be closer. And um, if they're in the lead, it'll be the Damian Pierce show. All right, buckle, no, buckle no. up, everybody. Yeah. Because my three remaining starts of the week. You're going to need them steel underpants. You slap them on. You protect yourself. You gird your loins. But you start Zach oh, Moss. Oh, my gosh. Zach Moss, start of the week. You, Zach, you start Zach. Uh, Zach of the week. Oh, <laughs> Zach of the week. He's, make me look, walk out he's, again. he's taking on the Houston Texans. Jason already highlighted last year's week 18. Uh, Texans run defense allowed three rushing touchdowns to Baltimore this past week. He's going to be the primary running back for the Colts probably for the rest <laughs> of the year. <laughs> and I think that he is a player that you could have just picked right up off the waivers or traded for dirt cheap from someone who hates him, and you can play him as a running back too. My wide receiver start of the week is DJ Moore. Oh, man. It was a bad week one. They're going to design more work for DJ this week. You drafted him. You're freaking out. It's going to be better. Trust me on this one. Fifth most routes among all wide receivers in week one. Just saw two targets. They were they got into a bad rhythm on offense. I think it's going to change this week. And the Buccaneers, we saw them last week give up, I don't know, 100 million yards to Justin Jefferson in the first half. You saw Jordan Addison have a big week. Third most fantasy points given up. They are not a good defense. DJ Moore takes advantage this week. Al Borland, keep him in your lineup. I will. <laughs> All right, at wide receiver, I'm going with T. Higgins. Bounce back off the goose from eight targets, and it wasn't eight targets. If you haven't watched the video of all of two. his targets, it was one and a half targets and six. <laughs> might as well just been punts in his direction. Um, th- this week, he's going up against Baltimore. They were not tested last week by C.J. Stroud and company. If you look at last season, they were 27th in passing yards uh, per game allowed 23rd and expected points added per pass attempt. And the last time that Higgins actually played a full game against Baltimore, he had 13 targets, was 12 for 194 and two. You don't bench him in a game where the Bengals are sporting a 25 point team implied total. Zay Jones of the Jacksonville Jaguars against the Kansas City Chiefs. He's Zay le- of the week. Zay of the week. <laughs> yes, thank you. He led. The Jacksonville wide receivers in snaps, he saw 22% of the targets. He saw 50% of the team's red zone targets. He went 5 for 55 and an insane touchdown. He's in the highest over-under of the week. Uh, He's another player. I picked him up. I'm playing him as a flex or wide receiver three. I know we're trying to breeze through these, but one thing worth remembering is Zay Jones was very relevant back half of last year. Yeah. And there was a rapport thing there with Lawrence and Zay Jones. He's that, the spot starter, man. That started to transpire, and I think that is continuing. 
All right. Is it my turn? It yep. is. Tight end start of the week is Dalton Kincaid against the Las Vegas Raiders. Buffalo, major change in their personnel in week one. They had uh, 68% 11 personnel, which is a one tight end set last year. They, they went to 25% in week one. 57% of them had two tight ends out there. Dalton Kincaid ran 38 routes in week one. That was tied with TJ Hawkinson for the most by a rookie tight end ever in the last decade. Wow. Yeah, that, that's a qualifier forever. Uh, just in the last decade. And um, I think that Dalton Kincaid is actually going to have a big week. Rookie tight end? Yeah. Yeah. Scoffing? I am scoffing. I would never. I'm going start of the week. Luke Musgrave. <laughs> Uh, rookie tight end for the Green Look Bay Packers. Look at you turning over a new leaf. Uh, I you, took you two weeks, but not Kincaid. No, uh, no, not Kincaid. <laughs> it was an encouraging start for the Packers and the rookie tight end. He caught three of four targets for fifty yards. He was moments away from two bomb touchdowns. One of which was his one of those receptions where he fell down kind of awkwardly. The other was just a missed wide open uh, play that he could have had a another big touchdown with the kind of injuries to the receiving core. Uh, you expect Christian Watson to not be out there, uh, maybe losing Aaron Jones for a little bit. Uh, I think Luke Musgrave can have a big game. And if, if you look last week, Atlanta, they had old man Hayden Hurst tear them up for five for 41 and a touchdown. So I think Luke Musgrave, who is out there all the time, running routes, they only ask him to block two times on passing plays, is a good start this week. And I'm going with Hunter Henry. Yeah, yes. this, is a, the, this is a great start to me. Uh, somehow last week's tight end one of the week, he led all tight ends and receiving yards with 56, but he did have the touchdown as well. Look, the Mac Jones and the Patriots offense looked far more competent, and this is just – it's. It's Miami. That's who they are playing against. That's why I liked Gerald Everett, even though that was it was the wrong player. The process was correct. Of Donald Parham had himself a mighty fine game, which of course means Mike Kosicki will be the one who comes down one for one with the touchdown. But the process says that Hunter Henry should have a good game, and he's talented. Uh, on top of that, he was he's a very reliable pass catcher for Mac. All right, all of the rankings and the start sit tools on the website, thefantasyfootballers.com. We've got articles coming out every week. We've got a brand new in-season app, completely free. Go to the Google Play Store, go to the App Store, type the Fantasy Footballers. You will get our rankings, our start sit tool, all of the articles, the podcasts. It's all on there, completely free. Check that out. Uh, we do have one more segment, and, of course, tomorrow we will conclude all of the matchups. But first... Jason Moore's Ironclad, Locked and Loaded, 100% Guaranteed Boom Boom Kicker of the Week. Last week on Boom Boom Kicker, I went full Swayze and declared my mission to vanquish every kicker. <clears throat> like a man bent on war, some say handsome as Thor, I bring the thunder like Judge Judy. Call me Gimli with my battle axe. I turn my foes into wax. Down goes the 49ers, Jake Moody. Some, huh? Some. So, so, Thank so, you, Mom. So it's, it's always, uh, <laughs> some say. Some say handsome as Thor. Huh. So fat, fat Thor. Handsome as so, Fat Thor. So, so that, I just left that part out. Jake He's, Moody is the pit, sure right? <laughs> yeah. Uh, okay. Thanks, Mom. <laughs> thanks, Mom, for calling me Fat Thor. Uh, what was your, Yeah, Jake Moody. Jake was the Moody's answer. the pick, but he also went down in the story. Yeah, I'm taking them all out. That's, oh. the, that's the story this year. But, so, like, but you're also picking them. I'm, I'm picking them to, uh, now to wait. be vanquished by me after this week. So are we now? So it's all their swan songs. Yeah. Yes. So we're we're not starting him. No, no, no. You're starting him because yeah. this is the last chance. Oh, because he's taking them all out. It's yeah. violent. It's very violent. It's with an axe. It's yeah. pretty violent. <laughs> yeah. Wait. Some people say you look like Gimli. Right. Some do. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, Dad. All right, that'll do it for today's episode of the show. Thank you for tuning in. Like I said, we're back tomorrow with the rest of the matchups, the fantasy face-off where one of us, not me or Mike, will be spinning the wheel of shame. Don't miss it. Take care. Goodbye. Thank you for listening to another episode of the Fantasy Footballers Podcast. Join our fantasy football community on jointhefoot.com. 
and follow us on Twitter at the FF Ballers. <laughs>